Ward 4, a couple of blocks away on 2nd and Kennedy Street. The last two weeks in our ward have been devastating. I have gone to two crime scenes one week apart just a couple of blocks away on Georgia Avenue. Four individuals shot, one killed. And of the four individuals who shot, a six-year-old boy, a six-year-old student who lives and goes to school in our community. As him and his mother were going to go get pizza and a soda after school. In broad daylight, shots rang out. No consideration for the community that is around as you fire shots and innocent bystanders, innocent children are being shot. And then we got a call two days ago, a shooting, three individuals shot, two, a six-year-old and a nine-year-old, students who live in our community, broad daylight, on a bus, headed home with their, with their grandmother and mother. I had an opportunity to speak with the family and the young boy last who was shot last week, who is incredibly brave, but an incredibly traumatized and scared, doesn't want to sleep with the lights off, with the, with the lights on. He wants the lights on, he doesn't want the lights off. Every time he hears a noise, he gets frightened and afraid. Mothers, seeing these mothers crying tears, scared that their babies will no longer be here. It is incredibly, incredibly disappointing. It is incredibly unnerving that our children, our families cannot walk to get food and soda, cannot go home from school safely, get to school safely, because individuals have made a decision to beef, to have conflict over absolutely nothing. The violence and the shooting in our ward has been predominantly based on neighborhood crew and gangs beefing with each other. Conflict that is resolved with a gun. And killing and shooting each other, your own community members. That's somebody's son, that's somebody's nephew, that's somebody's grandson. Just like you have sons and grandsons and children, these are somebody else's kids. And when you shoot a gun, in a public place anywhere. You have taken away the sacredness of life and humanity. You are not valuing the lives of others, but you are also not valuing your life. Deciding to be in a crew and a gang and beef over neighborhoods? This has gone back as far as I'm a kid. I grew up on 2nd and Kennedy. What are we fighting over? Fighting over neighborhood names? Don't you see our streets? And then you tell me, council member, all this displacement, all this gentrification, yeah, we have a right to be angry about displacement and gentrification, but killing each other is not the answer. Killing each other is displacing each other permanently. So how are you angry about displacement and gentrification and then turning around and killing each other? We're better than that. You want to claim Kennedy Street? Buy a business. Start a business. Pick some of these.
youth up, get together, buy some property. That's how we fight against the displacement that we have experienced. Not picking up a gun and shooting it at each other. We're killing each other. It is outrageous because we forgot about the humanity of life. It matters. Your life matters. You deserve a future. And when you choose to pick up a gun and shoot it at each other, beefing over, oh, somebody on TikTok, Instagram talking, it's a mess. We got more important things to do. MLK holiday is on Monday. And our ancestors didn't fight for us to be here to resolve conflict with guns and killing each other. We're already working against systemic racism and oppression. We already got enough things against us. Why would we, we would be against ourselves? Why would we be against ourselves? It makes no sense. I get it. For those of us who grew up here in this community, we have felt the impact of divestment. We have felt the impact of displacement and gentrification. It is real. We, we need educators in our school, that's true. We need mental health and school-based mental health in our schools, and that is a fact. We need more resources. We need people to be housed with dignity and housing is a human right. We need clean water. All of that is true. And so I'm not taking away the fact that you have every right to be angry and incensed, but I'm telling you to not internalize that anger and turn into gun violence and killing, but internalize that anger to make a difference in your community and to stand up and support and love on each other and not kill each other. It's, it's, it's been past time. A six-year-old, a nine-year-old fighting for their life, having to recover. And here's the thing. For those of us who've been here forever, we know all the new neighborhood crews in and out. We know the gangs that have existed. There are former gang members and crew members who will tell you right now, this isn't the direction you want to go. There's only two things that happen here. You end up in jail. Wasted talent, wasted value, sitting in jail, or you end up in the ground with a life not realized. That's it. But we're offering you a third option. We're offering you a third option today. Everybody who is standing with me is offering you a third option. If you need a job, we will get you one. If you need training, we will do it. If you need support, if you need mentoring, if you need tutoring, if you need a space to call home, we are here and ready to fight with you and for you to make your life conditions better. And we're not giving anyone excuses, but we're saying to you, we're here to embrace you, but you gotta make a change. Killing and shooting in our neighborhoods is unacceptable especially when our babies are getting shot and some killed. Unacceptable. Mothers wailing and crying. We're tired. We're all tired showing up at crime scenes every day. Our pastor's having to do funerals for children, for young people. A potential is not realized. All of us have been here in the work, in the community. So today we are saying it's not just about accountability for government, because that is a conversation we are gonna have. But we're not gonna talk about the political part. This is about accountability as a community. That's it. That's My grandma used to say, it takes a village to raise a child. Who is in a village? That means that everybody on that block knows who you are and supporting your family. That means your, the neighbor next door is a part of that village. That means our education system is a part of that village. That means our faith community is a part of that village. That means government is also a part of that village. Anybody who is a part of this community, small businesses are a part of that village. It takes a village. And it's gonna take a community to end gun violence. It's not one of us, it's all of us. We need parents to step the parent to parent. Love on these young people, give them the time. And if you need resources and support, we're here offering it too. Parents, parenting is not easy. 
especially when society, with the, with the rates that we have, when it comes to unemployment, when it comes to wages that are not enough for you to live a dignified life, hopelessness exists and persists. We're not, we're not taking that away. But you don't take, you don't use hopelessness. You take the hope that you have and you keep it and you fight for a better community, a better life, a better place to see. So today I'm standing with our community leaders and our faith leaders and I'm asking for a ceasefire in our community. I'm asking for this conflict over nothing, over Instagram, over TikTok, over Facebook stories, all of it. Pride fighting over crews and neighborhoods that we don't own, buildings that we don't own, blocks we don't own. We're not fighting over that anymore. We're not doing that anymore. That's not what we are about. That's not who we are as a community. Everyone says to me, oh, we so DC. We are. But what does DC mean? What does DC values really mean? It means we're family. It means we're community. It means we stick together. It means we are fighters. We are survivors. And we can't survive. And we can't fight. And we can't build family. And we can't build community if you're making a choice to kill each other and shoot young children in our community. So we're asking you to put the guns down. We're asking for the guns to go down. And if you want some to, someone to come collect a gun, I promise you, we can get someone to collect a gun. We're asking you to put them down. We're asking you to put them down for your community, for your life, for you. That is what this is about. That is what today is about as we stand here. And so I'm going to have some of the leaders who's been, who've been working in this community, credible messengers who work every single day in this community with our young people. And the first person I'm going to bring is Coach Rob Nickens, who has a game to coach today, but has also been mentoring young people in our community for years, who's been a roving leader, who's been a credible messenger, who's been a violence interrupter. And he wants to say something to our community and the young people in our community before he has to go coach a game. Thank you, Coach Rob. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As I stand here next to my council member, I can feel her shaking. Yeah. That goes to show you how serious business this gun battle thing is. Too many lives are being lost, man. Too many lives. You know, walking past a kid's casket and hearing a mom's cry mm. is an incredible situation that you can't explain. I've been to so many funerals in the last 20 years, but more lately, in World War IV, we've had too many shootings. So please put the guns down. Put them down. I'm begging you to put the guns down. Six-year-old life being yeah. taken, nine-year-old kid being shot. We had a 14-year-old kid to play football at Roosevelt, a freshman quarterback shot in the head fighting for his life. It's serious. It's serious. So I'm begging our community. War for the great community. With the leadership of Miss George, she's done a tremendous job in her seat. She wants it to end. I want it to end. Everybody behind me wants it to end. Let's do it together. Hey, if you have to come to somebody, these guys and, and women behind me are fighters. They fight for the right situations to save a life. That's what we're here for. So please, War Four, if you have not heard Coach Rod before, the message is to put the guns down. down. Put them down. We want to save these kids. They have a lot of bright future, a lot to live for. They've got to be put in the casket at the age of eight, six years old. So thank you for letting us speak today. Thank you, thank you. Next, we're going to have one of our violence interrupters come and speak. They do the hard work on the ground every single day, and they're so committed to seeing gun violence in, in our community, and I want them to have the opportunity to also speak to our community about putting these guns down. Good afternoon. My name is Johnny Scully with Kill the Streets. We work in a world of one, a world of four, and then a million. Hold the mic closer. We need the, we need the help of the community. Like, like the council member said, it takes a village. We in the schools, we in the elementary. We need the community to give us input and solutions to get this thing solved. And that's all I have to say. 
Thank you, Jim. I want to thank our Kill the Streets program who are on the ground every day uh, working to actually create these ceasefires and these mediations between our crews so that they can end the conflict and put the guns down. And we cannot do the work we do without our cure and violence interruption team. So thank you all again to our Uptown team for the work that you do in our community. Uh, next up, we have Reverend Hagler. I don't need to introduce him because he has been a civil rights activist in this community forever, since I was born. Reverend Hagler, I want you to come and talk to the community as you have for years. Thank you, Council Member. I want to thank the violence interrupters and the clergy for being here. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Yes. One of the things is that we need to respond to what is going on all around us, all across the city. Not as something that is normal, but something that is abnormal. Yeah, that's right. And need to be stopped at all costs. As we come on this weekend, having to deal with Martin Luther King Jr., who talked about nonviolence, who talked about this country trying to move to become a nonviolent entity. And I would say, D.C. moving to become a nonviolent entity. Yes. Yes. It calls for us to disarm in all kinds of ways. To disarm with guns and firearms. To disarm with hostile rhetoric. To disarm with the dehumanization of one another by attitude or in policy. To disarm in all ways and to be purveyors of peace and wholeness. I mentioned to Reverend Fears and Reverend Bird and other clergy that's here. What we need to do, and we can talk about it and strategize about it, is to have three days of 24-hour prayer and invite the whole community to come in, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, to talk about disarming and to pray about disarming to try to put a new spirit into the community, a spirit of life and a spirit of hope where a young life can grow up to be an old life, that they may see the entirety of their days and not be cut short by some nonsense, some foolishness, something that folks have been guarded into. We need to declare a prayer of disarmament. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to bring Pastor Reverend Crawford. Uh, Reverend Crawford has an initiative. Well, I'm going to let you talk about the initiative. But he has been talking about this and working in our community for a long time about bringing peace and love Absolutely. to our community. Reverend Crawford, thank you so much for being here to talk to our community. First, I'd like to say to the community and those who are having to need to have guns, I'm asking you to stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Put the guns down. Why do we need guns? What's the purpose of the guns? If the guns, they don't bring any peace, all the only thing they bring is devastation to our community. If you need to solve your conflicts, go to people who actually can talk you through it. Right at, right at the gym, at Emory uh, Recreation Center, there's a, a boxing coach up there. Ask for Tony. If, if you want to have a conflict, maybe boxing might be one of the avenues that you can, can use to solve a problem. You don't need guns. You know, I didn't grow up with having guns to solve my problem. You either you put the guns down or put your hands up. I'm a product from Longfellow Street, right up the street. I went to Truesdale Elementary School. I'm a product of this community. I didn't need a gun. And so all I'm saying to the young people, put the guns down. And for those young men who are involved in this particular uh, act, turn yourselves in. 
It's just going to be a matter of time you're going to get caught anyway. Someone's going to tell on you anyway. So turn yourselves in. If you're not, uh, or you're afraid to go to the police, come to one of us. You can, you can call the, the, the council member's office. You can call one of these uh, churches or one of the ministers. We can, we can take you to the police department. Stand down. And as uh, the council member mentioned about the, the initiative, we had to show love, stop the violence initiative, but it was started at New Redeemer Baptist Church, right on George Avenue, 5714 George Avenue. And one of the initiatives were to bring people together for conflict so we can talk these things out, talk to the crews, give them the necessary tools that they can use to resolve some of these issues. And all I'm saying to, to the community today, it's still our responsibility as a community, as men, to be in these young people's lives. And you know, I feel bad about that I was not able to talk to that young man who pulled the trigger. We're gonna have to start using our resources wisely. You just can't throw money at an issue or a grant. You have to make sure the people who understand the problem are the people who actually are addressing the problem. Yeah, Use wisdom, not political gain to say, oh, we're doing something about it. And so one thing I like about the council, the council member, uh, Janice George is that she wants action. This is a call to action. This is not a promise. See, sometimes people make promises that they can't keep. She's making a, a, a call out in a roll call, or even to the churches. This is a roll call for the churches to step up. But she wants not to talk about it. She wants to get this done. Amen. Um, I want to, I want to also bring Pastor Bird from Zion Baptist Church. Zion has been a beacon of hope here in our community. The work that Zion has done, it is a historical church first and foremost, but it's always been about community, not just preaching from the pulpit, but educating, getting on the ground and doing the work in our community. And so I want to Thank Pastor Burr for being here and asking if he could speak to our community. Thank you, um, Council Member George. And let's, let's just give a round of applause to Council Member George for her leadership in this issue. She's on the street. And I appreciate the people who are here who are doing the work on the street. And we're just here from the clergy community to say, as you put the guns down, we don't want you to be empty-handed. We're here to extend the hand out. And so I think I can speak for the faith community that's represented here and those that are represented by the groups that we're a part of that the church in this community is standing up to meet the challenge to help deal with some of this conflict and some of the root causes of this conflict. We're all in this together. And if we can't see that, then we're all going to be destroyed together. And so let us work together. Let's take the council member up on her word, on all of the, you got brothers here who know what you're going through. I may not be able to get to you, but these brothers know. So what I'm going to do, my part is, to support what they're doing. And I'm making that commitment right now on behalf of Zion Baptist Church, located at 4850 Black and Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. We're going to be a part of this community and a part of the solution. The question is, doesn't matter how many of us want to help, you don't put down the guns and make a different choice, the end result will be the same. Please accept the challenge. This is a call to action, not just for us, but for you as well. Thank you so much, Pastor Bird. And as we have another pastor in our community, faith leader, woman of God, Absolutely. who has known me literally since I was one, <laughs> Reverend Patty Fears. Fellowship Baptist Church. Fellowship Baptist Church, that's right. <laughs> you don't have to have the largest church to be about the business that's of it. church. That's it. I've been in D.C. for a long time, and Councilwoman just shared with you our years of knowing each other, and I just am tired, because I've seen her shaking, I am tired of these news conferences that keep on saying to the community over and over again, 
stop the violence. Stop it. It's time for us to put the guns down and pull up D.C. D.C. has to stand up. We are beating a light in the world. It starts right here. I know our church is right up the street and around the corner. When I saw the violence that took place the other day, I was like, I pass that all the time. I have young people that have to walk past that to get back and forth to the church facility. But we're not a church that you have to come to. That's we it. will come to you. All you have to do is say you have a need, and we will be there for you. We have taken down the walls of the church and decided we're going to make this a kingdom, that we're going to restore once again yes. the kingdom in this community. So if you need us, call us. We're here for you. If you see me walking in the street, I will say hi to you. I'm not mad at you. I don't care what you got. You know, we have to start being the community that we That's talk right. about. That's it's right. not something that is created by politicians or designed by, by conversations of rhetoric and policy. It is something that is done by the heart of the people. If you want your city back, and I want my city back. I'm sick of being inside from a pandemic. I want to walk down to soup up. I want to walk over to the stores in the city. Then we're going to have to put those guns down and lift DC up. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank our faith leaders, our violence interruption team, Coach Nickens, our roving leaders. This is not just a call to action, it is a cry to our young people to put the guns down, to cease fire, to solve conflict in a different way. And we're here to help you solve it in a better way, in a different way. We got programs, we got boxing programs. They're here. I saw a few people, I think I saw a brother, Al Maliki, was in the car from Cease Fire, Don't Shoot the Brothers. He said, if somebody wants to learn how to box, we're here to teach them. Our, our, roving, our, our, our violence interrupters, they're here to connect you to work, to jobs. We have a Jobs Not Gun Fair that's coming in April. I want every single one of you there. But if you need a job right now, come see us. If you're feeling like you need SNAP benefits, you need connection, government is hard to reach and you're frustrated, I get it. We're here, come to us. But we can't have this any longer. I don't wanna receive not another call, another week, about a young person in our city being shot or killed. The trauma is long lasting. When we have gun violence in our community, it's not just the person who is shot that has trauma, the community has trauma. And it reverberates everywhere. Pastor Reverend said we're restoring kingdom here, restoring community here, and that is what this is about. I don't care what neighborhood you grew, you grew up in, uptown, south side, wherever. We're one DC, we are one family. And if we don't come together and put down the guns and stop killing each other, we're gonna get rid of ourselves. We're gonna kill off ourselves. That's not what this is about. So once again, this is a call to cease fire, to put the guns down, to lift our community up. Thank you. What we're dealing with is something that I think, I'm gonna speak honestly and candidly because I have the time and I'm gonna take it. No, she said, don't say too much. <laughs> she knows me well. No, seriously. Um, the shooting that occurred, it happened at the end of my block. My neighbor was on the Metro bus when it happened. The shooting that occurred the week before, that was my friend. I grew up with him. 
he grew up less than a block away from that family dollar. Like, it's to the point that if y'all beefing or if you have problems, they're coming back out. They're coming home. They're working. I'm working on program with developing programs. We're trying to meet you where we are. They're holding town hall meetings in Southeast for the kids. There's so much going on. We have so many resources. And we're vesting and we're putting all of our resources and all of our time because when we're developing these programs, we don't get paid to do it. We're developing these programs because we're vested in our community. We were the murder capital. We don't want to come back to being the murder capital. This is ridiculous. And it's to the point that if you if there's something else that you want, if you don't want a podcast, if you don't want to go out and be a caterer, if you don't want to go out and stop the violence, like what is it that you want so that we can meet you? Because the only thing we are looking to do is meet you where you are. We are here to solve the gap. We are here to build a bridge. We love you. We value you. I've been in this community for all of my life. I have over 15 years of service in this community. I had to go across the bridge to, to even get the knowledge to bring the resources so that we can have this type of stuff here. We've been doing this work in Emory. Friends of Emory, we've been doing it over for 15 years. Cease balance over 20 years. We're vested. We're here. Those doors are open. Daryl Mack is there. Coach Lou is there. Right. We are more than here. That's we come right. up on this here once a year, and we have no problems. And we have more than 1,200 community members every year for over 15 years. That's right. So we're here for us. So with that being said, we need to bring back the resources. We need the kids to come into the rack. We need to be able to actually touch you, to see you. I need to know if you're beefing with somebody, if it's a problem, let us know what the problem is. Let us know what the neighborhood is. Yeah. Let us know what's going on because these, these men, these men, they've gone to jail. They came back. And guess what? Whether you're from Northwest, Southwest, Southeast, Uptown, Trinidad, Kennedy, Rittenhouse, all of that stuff. When you go to federal penitentiary, you are all DC blacks. That's it. That's it. You are all Say DC that. blacks. I grew up in the jail, and I don't want my children going up there. My kids go to street, go to school up the street. I have to make it back in time, and my kids go to school. This is ridiculous. From three to six, three to six o'clock. No, we don't deserve that. We're not doing it. Put the damn guns down. Put them down. Put the guns down. Use your words. Figure it out. There's too many resources. There's too many young, black, successful people in this city to just say it's, we have no other option. Because we do. And they're funding it. And they're funneling it. And if it's something that you want, you just speak for it. Just speak. I got on live. I see she was here. I came here. I'm speaking. Speak. Jasmine is what I, and she's about to jump. She has a STEM program, a science technology STEM program that she started. Her father, Lonnie Bunch at Emory, is an Emory legend. Saved so many lives. So many lives he saved. Every year we have a cookout at Emory. Friends at Emory, Coach Lou, all of them. All everybody who came from this neighborhood who want to see a change, who want to see different. And we're here for you. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Cease fire. Put the guns down. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the reason I brought these people here is because everybody who is here is actually credible messengers, have actually, who actually interact with, who know, crew members, we know, we, we, we've all grown up here. Everybody you see here grew up in this community. Some of them are former crew members. 
but we know who they are and then we know who they listen to. That's why this wasn't about sort of bringing, you know, a panel of government witnesses. This was about bringing people who are from this community, who have been in this community, who's invested in this community, because we're the people who show love every single day. We know who some of these individuals are. We just want them to know that we are united as a community, and this is what it's going to take. Thank you. Yeah.